All right, we're starting unit four, which is trigonometry and the unit circle. Our first topic is 4.1, where we're talking about angles and angle measure, pages 166 to 179 in your textbook. First, our curriculum outcomes. We're looking at curriculum outcome 30.1, where we're going to extend our understanding of angles in standard position, expressed in degrees and radians. Our lesson objectives for today, number one, we need to learn what a radian is, how it compares to a degree, and how to convert between the two. Number two, we want to increase comfort level in working with fractions. And number three, we need to develop and use a formula to find the length of any arc. So our first topic is radian measurement. A new way for us to measure angles is in something called radians. So by definition, one radian is a measurement of the angle created in a circle with a radius of one in which the arc created also has a length of one. So that might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but let's take a quick look at this diagram. So we've got a circle here. It has a radius of one because the center is at zero. So we're talking about an angle that's created in which the arc length, so from here to here, is the same as the radius. So if this has a value of one and these both have a value of one. This angle right here, we use the letter theta, the Greek letter theta to represent angle, is one radian. So one radian again, radius of one, arc length of one gives us a value of one radian. So now that we know what a radian is, we might want something that would be a little bit easier to work with. So if we had some sort of equivalency that we could work with, like a one radian being a certain amount of degrees, that'll help us when we're converting. So we're gonna start with the simple fact that we know that the circumference of any circle is two pi r. We've learned that in grade eight. Now, this particular circle so circumference being all the way around, this particular circle has a radius of one. And the circle itself is 360 degrees. So here's where we get to this statement. So again, a radius of one means that's two pi times one, which doesn't change anything. And the circumference of a circle is all the way around the circle. So that's an angle measurement of 360 degrees. So if 360 degrees equals two pi, then I know that pi is gonna be equal to 180 degrees. So two pi is equal to 360, I divide them both by two, pi is equal to 180 degrees. This is a very important fact that we need to use in um, angles and, and measuring angles and converting angles. So what is one radian then? Well, this is saying 180 degrees is considered pi radians. Remember that pi is 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. So if I wanna find out what one radian is, I'm gonna divide both sides by pi. So I get one radian is equal to 180 degrees divided by pi. And that ends up being one radian is approximately 57.1 degrees. Now we don't often talk about radians in terms of decimals, we more use the concept that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So this is a big thing for you to remember, write down, memorize, do something with this, put it in your brain because you're going to use it a lot. So one of the things that you need to be able to do is be able to write angles in terms of pi. So all these angles, instead of being written with degrees, we're going to be writing them in radians. And one of the things you also need to know is that we don't usually write in the word radians when we're talking about angles written in radians. Um, if there's a, there's a pi in there, we kind of just assume that we're talking about an angle being measured in radians. So we don't need to always write in radians. All right, so the first thing we need to know, we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi. So we know that zero degrees is equal to zero. 180 degrees is equal to pi. Halfway in between pi and zero is, 90 degrees. Well, that would then be pi over 2. So we have half a pi, full pi. Here we're going to have 1 and a half pi, which written as a fraction is 3 over 2 pi. A full rotation all the way around will be 2 pi. So that's 360 degrees. Okay, we can also start including some other angles in here. So we can include the ones that are halfway in between each of these blue angles. So for example, in between zero and pi over two is halfway, so that would be half of pi over two. That would make it pi over four. So zero 
one quarter pi, two quarters pi, which can be written as pi over two, that would make this three quarters pi. Four quarters pi, which is just one, so one pi, this would be five quarters pi. Six quarters, which can be reduced to three over two, and seven quarters pi. And then eight quarters pi, which is the same thing as two pi. We can use other angles as well. We can go with a 30 degree angle. This was a 45 degree angle. We can go with a 30 degree angle. Now 30 degrees happens to be um, 1 sixth of 180 degrees. So this would be pi over six. We could, if we needed to, go to 60 degrees. 60 degrees compared to 180 degrees is a third. So compared to pi, it would be pi over three. So the thing is that you need to be able to work with fractions. You need to be able to write these angles in fraction form as opposed to um, degree form and as opposed to decimal form. So you'll have a lot of practice doing this sort of thing. I just wanted to show you that we can easily convert some major angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. We can convert those into radians just knowing this fact that 160, 180 degrees sorry, is equal to pi. So there's some terminology we need to understand when we're talking about trigonometry and angles. The standard position of an angle is when the angle's vertex is at the origin and the initial arm is along the x-axis. So what we're saying is the angle is drawn, vertex is at the origin, there's the initial arm, a little shaky. And the other arm is then called the terminal arm. So that's just where the angle ends. So that is standard position. Vertex at the origin, initial, initial arm along the x-axis, terminal arm can be anywhere. We say that an angle has a positive measurement if the angles are measured counterclockwise, so that's this way, so to the left, if you will. But you can also have a negative measured angle, and that is when the, the angle is measured clockwise. So you could have this, and that would be a negative measured angle. We can have angles that are now measured over 360 degrees. So here's your initial arm. That arm can rotate all the way around the terminal arm. So you could end up with an angle that is measured over 360 degrees. And you need to know that two angles that end up in the same spot are called coterminal. So this angle, say it would be, uh, well, full 360 plus another 90, puts it at 450. So say this one was like 500 degrees. We can find another coterminal angle, so starting from here and only going straight there, and that would be 90 plus 50, so that would be 140 degrees. Notice that these two angles have a difference of 360 degrees. We could find a third angle that's coterminal, and I know we've talked about this last year, and that would be going backwards, and that would be a negative measurement. So negative 180 and another 40 would be negative 220. So just some terminology that you need to understand when you're doing these questions. So we're doing an example here. We're converting 225 degrees to radians. We're gonna do it in both decimal and fraction form. And to do that, we need to just remember at all times that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So the way I always like to convert is I have 20, 225 degrees and I know I'm gonna multiply by a conversion factor I want my units to cancel out, so I've got 180 degrees on the bottom, I've got pi radians on the top. Now, when I'm done, I have 225 pi over 180. That simplifies to a fraction, five over four pi. So this is as simple as it gets in terms of radians if we're gonna put it into fraction form. If we're gonna put it into um, decimal form, we just need to take this thing and include pi. So it's 5 fourths times 3.14159 and we end up with an answer that is 3.93. Now, I had talked about before where we don't usually write radians, so if there's a pi in your answer, we're always assuming that we're talking about radians. In this case, to avoid confusion with radians and degrees, it's always nice to write in rad at the end. So rad or radians. Um, if it was degrees, it would. if it was 3.93 degrees, it would be notated by the degree sign. If there's no degree sign, you're gonna assume that we're talking about radians. So we're gonna develop a arc length formula now. 
So this will be able to find the any arc length. So the arc length is this length right here around the circle. That's called arc length A. Um, we're going to be able to find any arc length depending on the angle. Now, one thing that we do know is that we'll call this a uh, radius of R. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple ratio of arc length to central angle. So central angle is that angle in the middle, or the central angle. So the arc length of the equation, that, or sorry, of the, the little piece here that we do know, that's, we're going to call that A. The central angle for that piece is theta. Now, the second arc length that we're going to compare this to is the arc length of an entire circle. So the entire circle, the arc length is actually the circumference. And the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. The central angle for an entire circle, all the way around, that central angle in terms of radians is 2 pi. We learned that today. 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi. So now we're simply just going to solve for A. So to solve for A, we're going to multiply both sides by 2 pi r. So that cancels out there. We multiply this by 2 pi r. And the 2 pi here cancels out with the 2 pi there. And we're left with A equaling your angle theta multiplied by r. So this is how you can find the arc length based on the angle and the radius. Now, the key thing is that your angle has to be in radians. This does not hold true if we're talking about an angle in degrees. So you need to make sure that your angle is always in radians. All right, so we have a little example here. It says, find the arc length created by a central angle of 70 degrees and a radius of 14 centimeters. So here's our equation. Arc length is equal to our angle multiplied by the radius. But as we just learned, we need to make sure that our angle is always measured in radians. So right now it says it's 70 degrees. Well, 70 degrees is not measured in radians. So in order to do that, we need to convert. So remember how to convert. We want our units to cancel out. So we want the degrees to cancel out. So I have 180 degrees on the bottom and pi on the top. So I end up with 7 pi over 18. Just because the zeros will also technically cancel out, divide them both by 10, we get 7 pi over 18. Now 7 pi over 18, after you put it in your calculator, is 1.22173 radians. So, we're looking for our arc length. We got 1.22173, and we've got a radius of 14 centimeters. And that means that our arc length is then gonna be these two things multiplied together, which is 17.1 centimeters. Now, we mentioned that the angle needs to be in radians. And the other important thing is that A and R are both measurements of distance. One's measuring the arc length, which is a distance, and one's measuring the radius, which is a distance. So they need to have the same units. If they do not, you'll need to convert one of them to make sure they are the same units. So in summary, we know that angles can be measured in something called radians as well as degrees. And we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. That's really key. Angles are drawn in standard position, and they can have positive or negative measurements. Coterminal angles are angles that end in the same spot. And because they end in the same spot, they differ by 360 degrees. Just one rotation, one full rotation, either to the left or to the right, clockwise or counterclockwise. You can find the measurement of any arc length by using the formula A equals theta r. Now, remembering that theta is your angle, it must be in radians, and A and r are measurements of distance. They need to have the same units. And your assignment is on page 175 to 179. Good luck.